I want to bring in Congressman Denny Heck. He represents Tacoma in the Congress. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. What can you tell us? What are you being told by officials about what happened here? Uh, well, we don't have any of the answers that we're all going to want in uh, as soon as possible, Alex. Look, the, both the mind and the heart want answers, and they want answers now. But the sad fact of the matter is that in order to do this in the right way, it's going to take some days, if not several weeks, in order to get to the bottom of it. But, Alex, please allow me the opportunity to send my thoughts and prayers to all the family members uh, of those who were either killed or injured uh, and do that on behalf of the people of the 10th Congressional District. Alex, this, the, there's some context here that I think is important for people to understand. Um, this accident took place right on Interstate 5. That's the main north-south road in the entire western United States. It runs from Mexico to Canada. And this bridge that the train came off is just south of one of the most congested parts on that entire road, including from Los Angeles to Vancouver, Canada. It is a miracle that nobody in a car actually uh, uh, was injured, let alone killed. It is a miracle. Uh, Congressman, it's Chris Jansen, and, I, and I'm wondering, given your experience, which I'm sure is extensive then in that I-5 corridor and this uh, particular section of it. I was looking at the Seattle newspaper and they were reporting some of the difficulties in, you know, getting the injured out of there. Uh, St. Joseph's, I think it is, was saying 77 passengers uh, are being transported to hospitals in Pierce and Thurston counties for considered uh, level red patients with the most severe injuries. Give us a sense of what the scene would have been along I-5 uh, at that time of morning, I believe 7.40 a.m., and what can you tell us about St. Joseph's? So uh, it, it is one of, this area is one of the choke points uh, on Interstate 5, especially a little bit to the north of where it is, but literally uh, tens and tens and tens of thousands of people drive through it every day. I drive that stretch of road every single day that I am home. It is right in the heart of the congressional district. And as a matter of fact, Chris, this is a little bit of the there but for the grace of God story. Mm. Uh, almost every Monday of the year, my wife Paula and I get up almost in the middle of the night. And she takes me up to SeaTac Airport and drops me off, turns around and goes home. This is almost exactly the time at which she would be at exactly that point. But as it turns out, on a rare a departure from my usual practice. I actually came back to Washington, D.C. yesterday, and so she was not there. Lots of other people were. Lots of people may be on their way down to Portland to get to Graham and Grandpa early for Christmas. Lots of people on their way into Olympia to go to work for state government. Uh, lots of people are going to be traumatized by this for a long time. Now, the hospital question, Chris, we have two outstanding hospitals at which these people are being treated. Uh, one is called St. Peter's at St. Joseph's uh, in uh, Olympia, Washington, but I think the bulk of the, the people are being treated up at Madigan Hospital. That's actually the hospital for Joint Base Lewis McCord. Chris, this is just a matter of a couple of miles. In fact, mm -hmm. it's adjacent to property. There's a part of Joint Base Lewis McCord, which is one of the largest military installations in America. There are to put it in context, 55,000 people per day that report to work at Joint Base Lewis McCord, most in uniform, but not all, obviously. I assume you were very much involved as this uh, major project got underway for the uh, new expanded Amtrak Cascade service. I understand uh, in your area, uh, Congressman Heck, there was a lot of excitement about this. Certainly, if it was your way to commute to work, you were happy to save that time, either coming or going. Uh, what was your just gut instinct when you saw that on this day that so many people were happy about day one of this new service that this had happened? So I, I wasn't involved at all in the in the run up to this, just to be clear in that regard. There were actually mixed feelings about it because there have been some uh, what turn out to be some tragically clairvoyant voices expressing concern that the increased speed of this uh, particular Amtrak service would present some real public health considerations. And it turned out to be the case. The very first day 